What's up guys, it's Jacob here, and in this video, I wanna discuss the behavior of capacitors in DC circuits. We're gonna go, we're gonna get kind of into a very fundamental understanding of how capacitors behave in circuits, and this will carry on into AC circuits and, and further on into circuit analysis and circuit design. So it's very important that you understand these concepts. So to start, let's go ahead and analyze one of the, the simplest circuits we can possibly have. So I'm just gonna draw here, I'm just gonna draw a battery. So here's our battery. I'm going to go ahead and draw a little switch there. And let's go ahead and put a capacitor in here. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. And uh, let's try and think about what, what's going to happen in this circuit, with the behavior that's going to happen in the circuit. So right now, obviously, no current is going to flow because this switch is open. So there's no way current can flow in this circuit at all. So there's no current flowing. The capacitor, we'll assume, is fully discharged. And what I want to do is I want to analyze what's going to happen the instant, the very second, this switch here closes, just like that. So as soon as we close the switch, what's going to happen uh, to this capacitor? So really, if you think about it, if the capacitor is discharged, this capacitor, this, this, this battery here is at some potential difference, or it has some voltage across it, right? Let's just say, I don't know, it doesn't matter any voltage, right? So let's just say it's got 12 volts, right? So it's plus 12 volts. And then over here, this capacitor was at zero volts because it was discharged. There was, there was, it was not charged at all, so it has, a, it has a potential difference of zero volts across it. And so the instant we close this switch, this, this capacitor is going to want to get to the same potential difference. It's going to want to have the same voltage across it as, as its power supply. And so current will begin to flow, right? <clears throat> so current will begin to flow, and this is the direction of conventional current flow, obviously, right? So this would be our I here. So it'd flow from positive to negative. And I don't really want to get into this video uh, whether current actually flows through a capacitor or not, okay? There's a, lar there's a very large debate about that. People say whether a current is actually flowing through a capacitor because really we think of current as the, as the flow of charge carriers, right? And really, I just I, let me clarify this a little bit, just because it's it, it causes a lot of confusion a lot amongst people, and there's a huge argument about this. We technically say yes by the definition of current. Current does flow through this capacitor. We can measure it. It's really there. Current flows through the capacitor, but no charge carriers actually flow across these plates. Okay, a capacitor is really just two plates. I don't want to get too much into how capacitors work, but really what's happening is a bunch of electrons on this plate are leaving the plate and going this way, and this plate is getting a bunch of excess of electrons from this negative side of the actual power supply, but no charges are actually flowing through the plate. But there is still a current flowing, right? Because this capacitor wants to charge up. So uh, I just thought I'd have to, I have to get that out of the way because there's a lot of argument amongst that, and a lot of people uh, kind of don't understand that. So no, no charge carriers actually flow through here, but there is, we still do say there's a current flowing through here. Charge carriers are flowing through these wires, right? So what I want to look at is how, how the current actually behaves in, in this circuit. The instant we close this switch, if we graph I versus time, so current versus time, the current would start out very high, right? It would start out very high, and it would decay over time. And eventually, it would decay to zero, right? Because as soon as you close the switch, this is at 12 volts, the, the potential here is zero volts, and this capacitor is going to want to charge up to this 12 volts. So it's going to have a large current that surges through this circuit as soon as you close the switch. As this capacitor begins to charge up, the difference in voltage between this capacitor and this battery start to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So the amount of current that can flow begins to decrease and it begins to decay. And eventually, after a, a, a long enough period of time, this capacitor will charge up all the way. It'll charge up to where it has the same voltage as this power supply, so it will be at 12 volts as well. And at this point, they have the same voltage across them, and there's no potential difference between this capacitor and this and this power supply or this battery, so no current will flow. And so, really, after a significant amount of time, after any significant amount of time, a capacitor in a DC circuit will reach zero current. Its current will be zero, right? And I also want to plot, I want to plot the voltage versus time. Let's look at the voltage versus time. When this capacitor was discharged and the switch was all the way open, Initially, the voltage across this this capacitor was zero, right? There was no, there was zero volts across the capacitor, and over time, uh, the voltage began to to increase. And so, what that would look like is you would have a voltage that starts off down here at zero, and it would it would begin to to increase, and it would eventually 
taper off, right? And this would be, it would it flatten out and level out at the actual supply voltage. And so basically, here's what happens. Here's what I want you guys to see. This capacitor is fully discharged. The switch is open. There's no current flowing. The instant we close this switch, current begins to flow and the, the voltage across this capacitor begins to rise, approaching the supply voltage. As this voltage begins to rise over time, the current begins to fall because there's not as much of a voltage difference between these two, between the battery and the actual capacitor. After a sufficient amount of time, the current will decay to essentially zero. Assuming there's no leaking current, uh, an ideal capacitor has no current leaking through it, so it would eventually hit zero. And then the voltage across this capacitor uh, would be would would eventually get to the exact voltage at this battery, and it would it would stay there. So that is how a capacitor behaves in a DC circuit. And if we if we take this idea, what one thing I want you guys to see here is when current is maximum. This is this is we could call I max, right? When current is maximum, voltage is zero at that point. And when we hit V max or the supply voltage, current is zero at that point. Right here, there 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 when voltage is max, current is zero. And when or yeah, when current is maximum, voltage is zero. And when voltage is maximum, current is zero. So it's very important that you understand this because this will this will carry on into how these capacitors behave in AC circuits. So they're kind of like complete opposites, right? So I want you guys I want you guys to understand that because it will come back to us in AC circuits. Let's go ahead and take this idea a little bit further, and I just want to show you guys how how we actually consider capacitors to behave in DC circuits. So typically, in a DC circuit, in a DC circuit, we would say that a capacitor, capacitor, this this circuit is equivalent. We would say it's equivalent to a circuit that looks like this. It's equivalent to a circuit with an open switch. That switch is open. That's really close. Sorry, guys, but this switch is open. And we say this because really, after any sufficient amount of time, and I just want to let you guys know that just this process, even though I say it's like, oh, after after so much time, it it charges up. Generally, generally speaking, this process happens rather fast. It happens extremely fast. Not always. It doesn't always happen very fast. But generally, if you just throw a capacitor across a power supply and there's no resistor in series, this is going to charge up really fast. I mean, we're talking microseconds uh, microseconds in time or just a few, a couple of milliseconds. So generally, this happens extremely fast. But there are some things that can actually slow this down, like you could have resistors in series or something like that, and it would slow this graph down. But eventually, it's always going to get to the same thing. But I just want you guys to know that this process, when I say after a certain amount of time, we're not talking like minutes or hours or anything like that. This generally happens extremely fast, less than a second. So, But not always. Like I said, you can slow it down. Uh, so anyways, that's why we would say generally a capacitor in a DC circuit behaves like an open switch because... Really, this capacitor is going to behave like a, initially, as soon as you place this capacitor on the circuit, it's going to behave like a closed switch. It'll be as if the, this capacitor was not even here. It'd be like a wire across here, right? Uh, initially. And after that short, brief period of time, this capacitor will charge up and it will be equivalent to this circuit where it is acting like an open switch and no current will flow. The amount of current that flows through this circuit would be zero and the amount of current that flows through this circuit would be zero. So that is how we say capacitors will behave in a DC circuit. All right, guys, real quick, I just want to show you guys this in real life. So we're going to actually take a look at this. I want to show you guys the current through a capacitor circuit, and I want to show you guys the voltage across that capacitor. We're going to look at these two values on an actual oscilloscope in real life here, and I want to show you these two curves and how they actually behave. All right, guys, real quick, I just want to show you guys the circuit I actually built. So here is uh, going to be our power supply. It's not really a battery, but I use the battery symbol, so it's going to be at 14 volts. And basically what we're going to do is I have it uh, charging up a capacitor through a 10 ohm resistor, right? 
and so it's going through this 10 ohm resistor and it's charging up this capacitor so I have channel 1 of my oscilloscope measuring the actual voltage across the capacitor so we should see that voltage start out at of course 0 right and then it's gonna it's gonna uh, increase exponentially and then it's gonna kind of taper off right and, and uh, get to the same voltage as the supply voltage and then um, I have this channel 2 measuring the actual voltage difference across uh, this resistor and this is actually going to tell us the current this is kind of telling us the current right we could use Ohm's law to uh, find I I is equal to uh, V over R right so if you took this voltage and divided it by 10 that would tell us the actual current flowing uh, through the circuit but uh, it doesn't really matter it's this, this is going to be directly proportional this voltage is going to be directly proportional to the current so we don't really need to see the actual current we could calculate all that stuff we if we wanted to but I really just want to show you guys this graph so you guys can see the voltage across this capacitor plotted over time and the current flowing into this capacitor uh, plotted over time so let's go ahead and take a look at that on the actual oscilloscope all right guys so here was that circuit um I had the 14 volts going in here, and I have this resistor, there's the capacitor, bunch of different probes and stuff uh, coming from the oscilloscope channels and all that. Doesn't really matter. I already did it all and I captured it on the scope and it's saved in memory. But uh, I basically just, instead of having a switch in there, so basically I just touched the wire to it and as soon as I clamped the wire on there, uh, that acted like the switch and the current began flowing. My oscilloscope captured it and here's what we got. Alright guys, so you can see here, uh, this is the instant I actually connected the circuit and so here's what's plotted. You can see the current is obviously, like I showed you, it's going to be at maximum when, this, when the uh, circuit is first connected or when that switch is initially closed. Uh, it's going to be as if that capacitor is not even there. And we could calculate the current going through, the, through this circuit just using Ohm's law. So it would be 14 volts divided by that 10 ohms and it would be roughly 1.4 amps flowing through that through that uh, resistor, through that whole circuit, the instant this switch was closed. And this is the voltage across the capacitor. Initially, it's about zero, right? And then it starts to increase. And so let's go ahead and scroll through this in time. And so our current starts to decay, right? And our voltage starts to increase. We'll hit a point where they actually cross, right? So here our current is, is starting to decrease and our voltage across that capacitor is increasing. Keep going. So we hit a point we keep going uh, where our current starts to uh, decrease significantly over time so our current's approaching zero and our voltage is approaching the actual supply voltage the voltage across that capacitor and if I keep going in time you can see that current just keeps decreasing and our voltage keeps increasing and eventually you reach a point where the voltage is uh, or the current is zero or it approaches zero it'll eventually taper off down to zero and our voltage will uh, taper off uh, at the actual supply voltage so it'll uh, become the supply voltage across the capacitor and at this point the capacitor is actually acting like an open circuit and there is no current flowing uh, through the circuit anymore so the capacitor is fully charged no more current can flow through the circuit at all and that capacitor is actually open, acting like an open switch of course in an ideal capacitor uh, there's no current flowing but in real life current does leak through them so we are seeing a little bit of that here um, but ideally, no capac a capacitor will have no current leaking through it. It doesn't dissipate any power. Of course, in real life, that, uh, that doesn't really work in practice, uh, but that doesn't matter for this case. I just wanted to show you guys kind of how the actual capacitor behaves in circuits. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for this one. In the next video, we'll be looking at how these capacitors behave in AC circuits, and we'll be analyzing these things in AC circuits. They have a lot uh, more interesting behavior in AC circuits, but... Uh, the main thing to get out of this video is they act like an open switch in a DC circuit. Once they've been in a DC circuit for any significant amount of time, they act like an open switch. So that pretty much does it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next one. As always, have a good one.